The Apollo program was probably the most successful program the world has ever seen. We flew six flights that landed on the moon. There were 12 people that walked on the surface of the moon. Six people stayed in orbit. There were 18 humans that actually visited a foreign planet. The space program in the United States was compartmentalized to a certain extent because we started out with Mercury, which is a one-man uh, spacecraft. Uh, we flew a number of those, both suborbital and orbital. Then we went to the Gemini program, which is a two-man program. Uh, the Gemini program was designed to develop and demonstrate all the techniques and the things that we would need to do in the Apollo program once we got to the point where we could land on the moon. So, Gemini developed the rendezvous techniques, the rendezvous and docking techniques, uh, developed uh, the capability to do a spacewalk, and Gemini also stayed at least one flight for 14 days so we could make sure that we could survive for 14 days, which was about what a lunar flight would be. Then the Apollo program came along, three men in the Apollo program, and the reason there were three men in the Apollo instead of two was that we uh, had a requirement that the, the, the spacecraft that was gonna make dynamic maneuvers had to have two people on board so that you have two people watching everything instead of just one. That's why we had two people in the lunar module going down to the surface. The command module pilot staying in lunar orbit, such as myself, uh, we didn't have all the dynamic stuff to do, so it was okay for one of us to be there. The, the, the whole idea of the Apollo program was that we were gonna take the lunar module to the moon, attach to the command service module, go into lunar orbit, drop the lunar module off, and then the dynamic part of that was to, be, was to fly down to the surface uh, and land, and the two uh, astronauts that were on the, in the lunar module then would get out and, and, and do uh, scientific uh, observations of the landing site, uh, in addition to collecting some rocks to bring back uh, for analysis. And while they're doing that, the command module pilot in lunar orbit uh, had, the re had the job to do of recording remotely uh, data from the lunar surface, uh, photographing the lunar surface, and making visual observations of the features on the moon so that we could ultimately decide those kinds of things in the past that made the moon what it is today, either meteor impact or volcanic activity. And those things are, 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 are readily apparent when you get close enough to the moon to look at them. I had kind of an interesting grandstand seat to watch the moon, uh, going over it, uh, around it 75 times. The problem at 60 miles or 100 kilometers is that you're going over the surface rather quickly. At 60 miles away, I had a 10 power monocular that I could look at the ground, but I had to be very careful because I had to swing it as I'm going over the ground to stabilize on a point down there. So it was very difficult, but there were some times when I actually saw the lunar module and the lunar rover sitting on the surface. So yes, I could see them and I could talk to them. Apollo 15 was the first truly scientific flight in the Apollo program. We trained for a year and a half as a backup crew on a Apollo 12 and that got us into, uh, made us knowledgeable of the systems and how to fly there and get back. Then the year and a half before our flight, we focused on the science that we we're gonna do once we got there. So we studied geology extensively. We made many trips around the world, as a matter of fact, studying geology, and we wanted to look at things like Meteor Crater in Arizona and uh, volcanic activity in Iceland. And so we get a comparison and we know kind of what we're looking at when we get to the moon. Very, very disciplined, if you will geologic training that we did here on Earth to get ready to go to the moon. And once we got to the moon, the features that we saw were easy because we knew what to look for. When Dave and Jim got back into lunar orbit and we rendezvoused and docked, and we, when we opened the tunnel, uh, I could smell the dust instantly. It's a very strong odor. Uh, it's been described as smelling like gunpowder. But the dust was clingy. It, was, it would stick tight to a suit or to crew patches and that kind of thing. We had to clean off as best we could, but we never really had dust flying around in the command module. Now, they might have been in the lunar module, uh, but we were pretty clean in the command module because they were, we were very carefully wiped everything off uh, when we brought it in. The United States of America put a man on the moon because we had a space race going on with the Russians. I think there was a, a political 
content uh, to all of that in addition to just pride. The idea of going to the moon uh, kind of receded in people's minds for a long time, but it's coming back now. Uh, and I see a lot of interest out there in going back to the moon. I think we're gonna have to get to the point someday where we realize we're all humans. We're all trying to achieve the same thing. We all need to work together to achieve those things. And so I see the only way we're gonna go forward in space is if we do it through cooperative programs.